So to give a very brief and coarse introduction to why roots are important for any crop, there's three major components. There's the mechanical component, and then there's water acquisition, and then there's resource acquisition. Um, everyone's more or less aware of these, but people generally don't think of them very much because it's underground, hard to see perhaps. And so we're trying to investigate roots a little more vigorously and determine what traits are associated with the better water acquisition, nutrient acquisition, or even mechanical support if that was a concern of a particular breeder. So we're trying to focus on this, these set of sets of traits that are generally ignored. And the first thing we try to do is identify where resources are available uh, in the sense of nutrients and water. And generally speaking, nutrients are, are more available in shallower soil. Um, and this, of course, depends on the type of nutrient um, and the mobility of that nutrient in the soil. Nutrients like nitrate are quite mobile. They can move very easily in water. They have little reactivity with soil. Phosphorus occurring as orthophosphate in the soil is very immobile. It binds quite heavily and readily with soil particles, so it is highly concentrated in the soil surface layers because as, as roots scavenge and look for nutrients, they transport the, those nutrients. In this case, the example is phosphorus as being an immobile nutrient. They acquire that phosphorus wherever they find it, transport it to their biomass, and make seed and then the nutrients that are not harvested in the seed fall back down to the soil surface in the biomass and decay and over years that leads to a concentration of immobile nutrients in the soil surface. Um, that also combined with microbial activity being more active in the soil surface leads to much greater phosphorus availability in the soil surface. Therefore um, nutri nutrients such as phosphorus are more available in the soil surface and plant root systems that more effectively explore the soil surface can get more nutrients at less cost, which is something else we consider quite a bit, which is often not considered in root systems, the cost and benefit ratio of a, a given root or a type of root system. Um, and so when you're doing this, some of the costs you consider are the construction cost, how much photosynthates, how much photosynthetic assimilates does it take to construct a given root, and also how much does it take to maintain that root and factors involved in maintaining a root include respiration, that root is alive, it has to respire. It includes replacement of enzymes. There's enzymatic turnover, those enzymes are expensive to create. Those cells have to expend energy to create new enzymes. And nutrient transport itself requires the production and expenditure of ATP oftentimes to create a transmembrane membrane potential that allows uh, certain ions to be transported in. So those are some of the costs associated with roots. And then the benefits, of course, are water and nutrient acquisition. Um, and, and so I was just discussing how there's a greater benefit of sh exploring shallow surfaces of the soil because you can get those immobile nutrients, nutrients such as phosphorus. Um, and so the potential benefit of a shallow root system, in this case adventitious roots, is going to be greater than a tap root. Uh, if we're only talking about phosphorus. Um, and that's why we investigate things such as the number and diameter of adventitious roots and the, the branching density. Basal gr growth angle is something else that can be associated with phosphorus uh, assimilation because a shallower basal root system will more effectively explore surface layers, meaning that plant can have greater acquisition of phosphorus for uh, min uh, minimizing the cost. And of course you have a trade-off with that because if you have a drought situation, water will be available deep, deeper in the soil surface. And so if you have a root system that's exploring only superficial levels, it's going to have a, it's going to sacrifice its deep exploration and water acquisition. And so we're, at the same time, we're trying to identify traits associated with water and nutrient acquisition. We're trying to create an idiotype or a an ideal phenotype for a type of root system that can co-optimize resource acquisition of both immobile nutrients and water. Um, if we were talking about maize, we would also be talking about nitrate, which is a mobile nutrient. And so there's a whole different set of traits associated with the acquisition of mobile nutrients. So in addition to just the cost and benefits of different root classes and root traits, um, one should pay attention to um, just having healthy roots. A healthy root 
roots are your interface with the soil and the soil is arguably a most important environment of, of the plant. Of course you need a sunshine and light um, and you need to have some tolerance to biotic pests in the surface and the, on the shoot, but the root is critical, absolutely critical. Um, nematodes and root rots and a variety of pathogens can play a critical role in limiting root growth and if that root growth is limited the plant can't acquire the nutrients it needs, the water it needs, um, and it, if it's attacked it expends relatively more energy trying to protect itself. Respiration rates go up, um, production of secondary metabolites go, goes up and that's all a, a drain on the production, a drain on seed production. It's taking seed, taking energy from seed production, investing it in things that um, aren't related to what we're interested in. So root physiology and root growth is very important. That's why we're investigating it. Um, we believe there's a large potential for improvement in root physiology and root traits, and that's why we're trying to identify a, an idiotype for a combined stress environment. But this type of study is applicable to a variety of crops, um, maize, sorghum, cowpea, wheat. More and more people are starting to identify, investigate and identify root traits involved with stress tolerance in, in these crops and um, has a lot of potential for future crop improvement.